for a moment of silence and the pleasure of the flag and silence your cell phones. traffic on 17 so what we're going to do is we're going to start we're going to start with public participation we have 29 speakers signed up most i believe on palm tree uh, what i would ask is we're going to try to limit public participation to one hour so if you already spoke in one of the two public hearings on palm tree please limit your time to two minutes if you can uh, we've heard a lot of comments to lengthy public hearings um, i don't think we're going to hear too much new but i'm sure we will have some new uh new comments so the first up is Kath. Uh, yep, go ahead. I, I just want to note for the record uh, that pursuant to uh, town law section uh, 73, uh, the Orange County Legislature did hold its statutory required uh, public hearing. That was on August 15th, continuing on August 16th. Uh, that's where we took uh, testimony and evidence and written comments um, and a finding, a report and finding statement has been issued. Uh, and uh, submitted to the uh, Rules Committee. Uh, they approved that report. Uh, so all evidence has been submitted at this point. Uh, so today we're just taking comments, no further evidence. Thank you. Thank you. Also, um, let's try to keep our comments to the merits of the resolution before us, resolution number two on the uh, agenda. And let's not uh, try not to get into any character assassination or deviation from the uh, Here's the resolution. Thank you. First speaker, Catherine Troiano Monroe, individual regarding palm tree. Thank you. From what I can see, the main selling point of palm tree is that palm tree will remove the block vote from the town of Monroe once and for all. This is not true. There are two main factions in the village of KJ, the main group or the Anash, and the dissident group, otherwise known as the KJ Alliance. The KJ Alliance makes up approximately 40% of the Hasidic population in Curious Joe. The KJ Alliance owns approximately 95% of the undeveloped land in the town of Monroe, not the village of KJ, the town of Monroe. The KJ Alliance owns Shea Meadows, Pollock Farm, Rye Hill Estates, Eagle Ridge Subdivision, Smith Farm, Henry Farm, Larkin Drive, Elroy Estates, and most of Scunamunk Road. There is currently a mikvah in the town of Monroe, Mikvah Yisroel, and a girls' school in close proximity called Glenwood. There is another girls' school of equal size before the Monroe Planning Board right now. The residents are already having difficulty with water in that area. The KJ Alliance did not purchase this property over several years not to develop it. They will develop it and their block vote will grow at an extremely rapid rate. Palm Tree does not preclude the KJ Alliance from annexing land. It only precludes the signers of the agreement with United Monroe. Two years ago, United Monroe was in a frenzy of about 164 acres approved by the Monroe Town Board for annexation. United Monroe and this legislature litigated against the 164. The Monroe Town Board's decision was upheld in New York State Supreme Court. It was upheld again on appeal. I find it surprising that after fighting the 164 tooth and nail, 
that after the hundreds of thousands of dollars that have been spent in litigation, that after all the passion and protest, and let me be frank, grandstanding done on that issue, that now the Orange County Legislature is on the brink of basically forming the all Hasidic religious town of Palm Tree with an additional 56 acres. No environmental review, no financial review, no buyout clause, and no protection of the $5 million in Monroe's fund balance. How did we get from people literally crying in fear about the 164 acres after a year and a half discussion to voting on a brand new town after two back-to-back -back public hearings in the middle of August? Is that it? There seems to be a tremendous amount of inconsistency here. This process was flawed from the, pe from the very beginning, and people are trying to rush it to the ballot now because just as it was politically expedient to rail against the 164 two years ago, it is now a politi politically expedient to be in favor of creating a town based on religion with no environmental or financial review or safeguards. This action will have an impact on Monroe and Orange County for years to come. Something of this importance should not have been negotiated behind closed doors. The entire legislator should have been involved and the public should have been there as well. That can still happen. If the legislator votes no to moving Palm Tree forward tonight, it, it is not now or never. A more appropriate aphorism is you can't build a great building on a weak foundation. You must have a solid foundation if you're going to have a strong superstructure. Right now, Palm Tree cannot have a beneficial outcome to Monroe and Orange County when the process, the foundation, has been so very unstable. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take one more speaker. The county exec is here, then we'll do the presentations. Okay, Christine Tucker, Monroe, on the uh, new town. Hi, Christine Tucker, Town of Monroe. Good evening, thank you for allowing me to address you this evening. Separation to create a new town is a request that should not be on the ballot this November. This is not to say that creating a new town by separation is bad or good. The process of the Orange County Legislator decided to use to make this decision to public hearings is not in the best interest of the communities directly involved and the surrounding communities that should be considered as they will be affected to. Each Orange County legislature, legislator should consider the effects a new town will have on all of Orange County, including the ones they personally represent. Each Orange County legislator should consider the environmental, financial, water, sewer, and other aspects that creating a new town will have on Orange County, including the ones person they personally represent. Each Orange County legislator should consider their responsibility to the public and vote no until there is adequate information to move forward with the request for a new town. Please vote no and start a reasonable process to consider creating a new town. Protect all your residents by getting the information before you send the vote to the public. Thank you. Thank you. Well, okay, we have a proclamation recognizing September 17, 2017 as National Recovery Month. I'd like to invite up the county exec to do the presentation. Dr. Dean Scherr from Catholic Charities. Uh, Charlie Quinn from Recap and Chris Molinelli from Honor. Hey, it's good to see the uh, good audience tonight, and obviously the legislature, full legislature. Uh, earlier today, uh, we did a semi-ribbon cutting on what's called the Hickory Hill Recovery uh, House, right? Am I seeing it right? And uh, it is uh, going to be home to 24 men um, that are uh, dealing with substance abuse. And uh, everybody that's up here today uh, spoke a little bit about it. Uh, Dean, I'm going to steal some of your show, but I mean, uh, it is the, it's the leading cause of death. Opiate, the opiate uh, crisis that we're dealing with in this country. It's the leading cause of death for people 50 and, and younger. I mean, that, that's staggering. So uh, as we, in the legislature, we're gonna be talking about budgets in a few weeks for the county. You'll see where our social service budget is now starting to move from not only helping people with different types of uh, assist, public assistance, but we're spending more and more 
on our level as well as other levels to fight uh, the opioid crisis in many different ways. Uh, so what we're doing today is talking about uh, National Recovery Month and the word that we're trying to get out there is that if you know somebody, whether it's a relative or a friend, we want you to let them know that there's help on many different levels. And uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, let me just do a couple of minutes with each one. We'll start with um, Chris Molinelli, who runs Honor, who's also running, um, takes care of many of our homeless in Orange County. So maybe we'll start with you, say a few words, and we'll pass it down. Thank you very much, Mr. Newhouse. I appreciate it. Thank you all for being here. I'd like to thank the legislature. Uh, I stand here proudly with my uh, with Dr. Dean Shear and Michelle McKeon, as each and every day we, pro we do our best to provide Orange County with the highest quality of substance abuse services that we could possibly offer. Um, again, I stand here proudly. I want to thank the legislature, our county executive, in a time where leadership is so important. We want to thank them so much for that display. And I can't thank you enough for each and what each of you have done for us. And of course, our commissioner, Ms. Dutchman. Uh, Michelle, can we can? I, um, again, if you don't uh, struggle with substance use yourself, you may know somebody who does, uh, you have a friend, a family, someone you love, somebody you care about, and the work that we do every single day can't be done in isolation. We have to do it as a collective, and we're very proud at Recap to do it with Honor, and to do it with Catholic Charities, and to do it with Cornerstone, who's also one of our partners. And we can't do our work as community-based organizations without the leadership of our Commissioner of Social Services, and Department of Mental Health, our county executive, and certainly our legislature. So on behalf of the community that we all serve, we want to thank the county executive, Commissioner Miller, and our partners in the legislature for recognizing National Recovery Month, for recognizing the 94 people who have overdosed in this county over the last year, and the 27 million people who, who struggle with recovery every single day. Um, we need their, they need our support, and they need our lack of judgment, and they need treatment programs that provide quality services. So thank you to all of you for being here, and certainly thank you for, for your efforts and your support. Thank you. Michelle, uh, Dr. Dean Shear from Catholic Charities. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you to the legislature, to all of you for your support. Thank you all for coming. <coughs> Addiction knows no boundaries. Uh, geographic, economic, cultural, religious, it touches everyone. This week alone, I have known three colleagues who've lost someone they know from a drug overdose. 64,000 people died of opiate overdoses in United States last year. As uh, Mr. Newhouse said, that's the leading cause of death for people 50 and under. We are here to help, and we have a very unique and terrific, exceptional county in that the government and the, the Department of Mental Health and the criminal justice system and the nonprofit providers work together collaboratively to try to address this issue. Thank you. Uh, we have Sheriff called. the voice came, he's in the back, he and the DA were there today. We offer alternatives to incarceration in Orange County. Uh, the judges are mostly, uh, are, are very flexible to try to give people the help they need. We also offer Narcan classes, so if you represent a, a church group or some type of community group, we'll train you. And you'll have a little box or a little bag, depending on the manufacturer, in your car or on your person. So if somebody does overdose, uh, you have that tool right in front of you. So uh, Darcy Miller, Commissioner of Social Services and Mental Health. Thank you. Thank you, County Executive. As I said earlier today, and I'll continue to say forever, we are very fortunate to be here in Orange County where we all work so closely together. We have stakeholders across all the systems coming together. And I know you're all here for different reasons, but I'm glad that you're here to hear this message as well. It needs all of us to wrap our arms around this opioid epidemic and help to save lives. The, the uh, theme of Recovery Month this year is joining our voices to strengthen families and communities. And without community, we will not make a difference, we'll not make a dent in the services that need to be available for those who are struggling with addiction. As Michelle said, we have 23 to 27 million who are in recovery. This is a message of hope to say if you are struggling, if you have a loved one who's struggling, reach out to get help. Re go to the government website and look at all the services that are available. Make a call to my department. Call the county executive, many people do, and he connects you then to services. 
but certainly call the Department of Mental Health at 291-2600, and we'll link you to these amazing providers who have worked to put this event together, who work every day to listen to the stories of those who are struggling, and I thank our legislature for supporting this cause and always being available as well to understand that we need to do this work together. So, thank you. Just quickly, I want to thank all you gentlemen and ladies for, for all you do for this cause. Um, the, opio the opioid epidemic is more salient in Orange County than it's ever been. And uh, we have, we're fighting as hard as we can with Darcy, County Exec, Sheriff Du Bois, and DA Hoogler. And the legislature supports our efforts with money and with uh, endorsements. Uh, Matt is our loudest voice in the legislature uh, in this regard. And uh, we're, we're with you. And uh, thank you for all that you do. So uh, the numbers are staggering. The sheriff mentioned today he was an undercover narcotics uh, police officer when he was in Middletown, 1974, and he'd never seen the. Uh, look, you were, it was I was your old sheriff. You're laughing, but you know. Yeah, I say the date, didn't you? Sorry, <laughs> but uh, he said it's never been this bad. And uh, we talked about 93 in Orange County, 113 in Dutchess County, across the river. And then you go across the country. Um, you know, obviously the numbers are staggering. So with that, let's just get together and uh, hand out the certificate and move forward. Michelle, do you want to certificate? No, Dr. Dean is going to accept the okay. certificate. And if we could just move the mic stand out of the center. We're going to get together and Next speaker, Kate Amati on the Newtown and Gonzaga. She's from Washington. I, I speak generally, once again, for the protection of Scunamunk Mountain and its ridge, and specifically for continued protection of Gonzaga Park a small Orange County park connected to the Long Path. On the border just outside of the proposed town of Palm Tree, Gonzaga is in a unique position to serve the public, all the public. I'll skip most of what I have here because I have said some of it before. It is a place and environment where so-called different peoples can appreciate nature. We, non-Hasidim and Hasidim, can learn about and enjoy nature alone or together, as we wish. But in time, we are also learning to communicate in the park. It is one of the few places where that is happening, where there is hope that in fresh air and sunshine, dialogue can continue and develop. Personally, it is my hope that, as is perhaps beginning to happen in South Blooming Grove, our children and grandchildren will play together there. And so I speak for the continued protection of all of the Gonzaga Park that we all share. Thank you. Next speaker, Daniel Castricon from Tuxedo, former county legislator, by the way, and uh, speaking on KJ and Pontry. Thanks for the opportunity, Chair and Legislators. Nice to see everybody. Um, I do a radio show every Thursday. I had a woman call into the radio show today to urge the legislature to vote no, to deny the people of Monroe the opportunity to vote on their future. She droned on kind of a conclusory, conclusory you know, statements and uh, some misguided statements. Eventually, we, we had to cut her off the phone. But it got me thinking. You know, as, as we went forward, what if this were another village inside of Orange County? What if this were the village of Tuxedo Park or Greenwood Lake 
that came and said we want to uh, separate, we want to form our own town. I think I understand what you guys would be thinking. You'd say, that's kind of dumb, um, but we don't care. You know, let Warwick vote, tuxedo vote, get on with your lives, what's the next thing on the agenda? Right? I think that's probably the way it would go. Um, so what's the big deal here? And I'll tell you what I think it is, and what the woman who called the show was trying to say. If KJ wants it, it must be bad. And we just don't trust KJ with a town. Believe me, I get that. I've been fighting for environmental, fiscal, and sound governance for years. I think everybody up there knows that. So why am I in favor of this separation? Simple. I'd rather to continue to fight for the things that I believe in with a 1.4 square mile town instead of a 24 square mile town. You guys are politicians. I know that you get this. Curious Joel adds 1,000 voters a year. The median age is around 16 or 17. In five years, they will completely control every board and along with them, the zoning in Monroe. Monroe is about half the size of Ramapo. That block-controlled town has about 150,000 people in it and is growing exponentially. That town dominates the Rockland County Legislature and most of the countywide offices in Rockland. Does this legislature and the rest of the, the county want to be dominated by a huge block vote sitting right in the middle? I certainly don't. I offer this, sim this simple test as you listen to the naysayers. Lots of things would be better with the new town. Self-determination, protecting the schools, protecting Monroe's zoning. Dan, I've got to cut you off. I've got about uh, 15 yeah. seconds left. Uh, I'm really not giving any grace periods tonight. But <sighs> take read your last sentence. All right. Would those issues change with the new town, or is it already a problem? The 164 acres were already in KJ and being developed. The foundations are being laid. I submit this proposal to you. Every issue you hear or have heard or will hear about the issues in KJ are already a problem and will not be made worse by this separation. Give the people of Monroe a chance to force their own future. Many battles were fought to get to this point. Don't let them be in vain. Don't hand 13,000 of acres of Monroe Dan, I gotta cut you to off. KJ. Dan, Give I got to cut you off, sense. Dan. Please. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to stick to the, the night one. We're going to stick to the three minutes, okay? We've got a lot of speakers tonight. Okay, Sue Ann Vogelsberg. In Vogelsberg, I live in this uh, village of South Blooming Grove. I've been emailing you for months now. Um, you all know how I feel about this. I think th that the legislature needs to consider all of Orange County, not just the needs of Monroe and KJ. Um, what I'm, I'm also uh, concerned because I can't vote in this. You know, Monroe is talking about they want to uh, control their destiny. Well, as a resident of Blooming Grove, that was part, and my town was given away as part of this deal, I don't get a say in it. And this town, if this town does uh, be formed, it's gonna impact the whole county and, and just, I think everybody needs, the county needs to vote on it, not just Monroe, not just Monroe voters. So I encourage you, please consider all of us here in Orange County and vote no on this. Go back to the table, figure out and get a better so, better solution. This isn't this isn't the best deal that's out there. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Phil Gagler, regarding, uh, from Monroe, regarding palm tree. Hi. I'm going to do a slightly different approach. I'm having trouble with my voice, so I recorded what I was going to say. Share a personal story that reminds me of what is about to take place tonight. What I have to say deals with making the right decision when presented with it. 
February 2004, I was diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer. I was 46 at the time and showed no symptoms, nor had a family history of cancer that was caught during a routine physical. My primary care doctor was also an oncologist. His plan of action was to operate immediately, then do chemo. He told me I might have nine months to a year to live. I didn't know what to do. I thought, this guy's an oncologist. He must know what he's doing. I found out I was wrong. To him, I was just another cancer patient. After speaking with my family, I decided to get a second opinion. I was fortunate enough to get an appointment with a top oncologist in Sloan Kettering within three days. When I met with her, she told me, we could work with this. And I started a regimen of chemo prior to having surgery. She treated me as an individual. I've been in treatment nonstop since my diagnosis, which brings me to my point. Part of the Orange County Legislature are treating the residents of Monroe, but we don't matter. You have to consider that Monroe is unique in Orange County. We haven't had fair representation in decades. Everything was decided to appease those who our representatives into office. They did not take anyone's needs into consideration. have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to operate for the village of Kearsville and control our own destiny. Some argue that all we are doing is kicking the can down the road. I could have listened to my first oncologist and wouldn't be here tonight. Instead, I decided to take a chance and kick the can down the road and deal with problems as they arose. Are we kicking the can down the road? Perhaps. No one can predict what the future holds. You work to prevent any problems and deal with them when they arise. Having the right to decide your own future by voting on it is the right thing to do. What happens when a different town has a difficult situation to deal with? Does the legislature ignore them too? I'd like those of you who are either undecided or voting no to think about that. What happens when a town you represent has a difficult situation to deal with? This sets a precedent of not helping others who need help. Thank you for letting me speak tonight. I hope that in two months you will allow me to speak again by casting my vote on the future of my town. Thank you. Oh, yes, on the town of Palm Tree. Hello, Chairman Brescia, legislators. Thank you for your representation of Orange County. For sure, we're a dynamic citizenship. We're facing a decision that will shape our future for many years to come. I am Irene Walsh. I'm a resident of the town of Monroe. I'm a supporter of United Monroe and Preserve Hudson Valley because I believe that these two groups have provided the leadership that we have really needed in this crucial time. Over the last five years, these two groups have represented the citizens of Monroe, the majority of us. This group is very impassioned, and I know that the executive committees have been pointed out and dragged over the coals and named bad things, but there is thousands, there are thousands of members of Monroe who are very active, we're all volunteers, none of us get paid, and we want a better future for our town and for Orange County. Um, I'm asking you to do something tonight that's really simple. Will you please vote yes to allow Monroe residents to vote on the formation of Palm Tree? It's the right thing to do. Voting yes is the only decision that is in service to your citizens. Monroe residents should have the right to determine their own destiny. Thousands of us are, <coughs> excuse me, thousands of us are informed on the issues, we're educated, we're engaged, we've fought for years now, and we would like to move forward with the formation of the town of Palm Tree. If it counts with you that thousands of residents have mobilized and volunteered over the last five years to make their voices heard because they did not feel that they were fairly represented by their paid local officials, please vote yes tonight for Monroe residents to determine their own destiny. Um, if you vote no tonight and this vote does not pass, it will be on your heads what happens in this region. It will be on your head when a village known for environmental violations and the proliferation of high-density housing expands throughout the entire town of Monroe and destroys the school district. For years to come, the citizens of Monroe will point the finger at you, you legislators in this room tonight, and say that you failed us, that you did not represent our interests and the interests in Hudson Valley in this Orange County. 
So please vote yes tonight. Let the citizens of Monroe vote for ourselves on this healthy separation of towns. This is the time to vote. And I would also like to mention, since I've explained who I am and that I'm a supporter of United Monroe and of Preserve Hudson Valley, that the first two speakers who are not in favor were Kate Triano and um, Christine Tucker. They're employees of the town of Monroe. They're Harley Dole's friends. They have vested interests for themselves personally to speak out against this. And I know there are a handful of people that speak out and say no, and they are very personally, they will personally advantage from the, a no vote. So thank you again. Thank you. Oh, that was the time you had a, yeah. Antoinette's got a time that you like this. Laura Fernandez, Monroe, KJ Separation Jazz, and Emily Conver on deck, which she's right close to the front anyway, so. Okay. Hello, Thanks. my name is Laura Fernandez, and I'm a fairly new resident of Monroe. I moved here six years ago from New Jersey with my husband, mother-in-law, and then two-year-old daughter. We had a new home built near my sister, and I wanted our daughter to receive the wonderful education that I knew was Monroe Woodbury School System. Within two months of moving to Monroe, I became a follower, an eventual volunteer, member of United Monroe and Preserve Hudson Valley. It started with the sale of a movie theater that brought to light the dealings of the shady 507 acre annexation request from Curious Joel. Up until last year, our town board was controlled by men beholden to the KJ Black vote. No decisions were made for anyone other than KJ. No public comment was allowed, the list goes on. We were fortunate to finally get two candidates elected last year and gain a majority on the town board. The meetings aren't any easier, but we are so close to finally getting a new town supervisor. If we can do that in addition to separating, we become a strong Monroe who can work with other surrounding towns against future land grabs, keep zoning protected, and finally thrive as a community. United Monroe and the people it represents have been living and breathing this fight for five long years. We have donated so much of our own money to fundraising campaigns and lawyer fees. What other town has to do that? Can you even for a minute put yourself in the position of a homeowner in Monroe? If you lived here, you would want this vote as badly as we do. I know that myself and everyone that has worked so tirelessly to get to this point of separation are sitting here tonight with knots in our stomach. Our home value and the future of our town and schools are in the hands of 14 people sitting up here tonight. A yes vote saves our town, and a no vote will most likely lead to a mass exodus of Monroe residents and 13 acres that will become KJ controlled. It will happen. I am asking you, on behalf of myself, my husband, my 83-year-old mother-in-law, my eight-year-old daughter who just started third grade yesterday, can't finish. Um. Hello again, <laughs> Chairman Brescia, legislators. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. I'm Emily Colbert, Chairwoman of United Monroe. I was trying to come up with something to tell you that you don't already know and, or haven't already heard. You've listened attentively at both public hearings and I know you're aware that the overwhelming majority of people who spoke, attended, and who wrote to you are in favor of KJ separation. But what you may not know is that the vocal minority who have opposed this are for the most part misinformed. I've had many conversations and email exchanges with people who were previously against separation but are now enthusiastically for it. Why? Because they didn't have all the facts. People still think that we're giving KJ 220 acres. It's not true. People don't realize that 164 acres have already been annexed to KJ because our Monroe Town Board, elected by KJ, gave them away in 2015. When Woodbury residents or Blooming Grove or Chester residents learn this, they say, oh wow, I, I didn't realize that. And then they say, so why are people opposed to this? To which I answer, they simply don't have all the facts. The annexation fight has been going on for almost four years. First the 507 acres, then the 164 acres, then both at the same time, then the vote on the annexations by both municipalities, then the lawsuits, then the appeals. 
then KJ separation petition for 382 acres, then the amended petition, now this process. It's hard for the average person with work, family, life, school, and hobbies to keep track. I've been keeping track every minute of every day. I have all the facts. I have no agenda. I'm not running for office. I'm not interested in the attention. I really don't want it or need it. I have a justice chip. It was activated in 2012 when my town supervisor, Harley Doles, bought a movie theater. Ever since, we in Monroe have been painfully aware of the damage a puppet board can do. Our movement has grown and thousands of active Monroe citizens have been watching, learning, and have been engaged for the past five years. We're a really educated electorate. I'm sure you've gathered that from listening to my fellow citizens. You'll hear from a few people from Monroe this evening who are against this. Please know that they are the same people who tried getting Harley Doles on the ballot for this November election but failed because no one would sign his petitions. The people of Monroe are smart and engaged. You fight so that the fighting can end. You fight so that a solution can be found. We found a solution. We want the fighting to stop. Trust us with this decision. Please vote yes. Thank you. Jeffrey Manson from Monroe. Good evening. Um, I'm from the town of Waviana, and uh, first off, I wanted to say I hope that everybody is thinking about the people of Houston and Texas and, the, and your prayers and the Floridians who may also get blasted. All right, what I'm talking about is I'm not a member of Harvey Dole's gang, and I think this is a... Uh, a constitutional issue here. You're going to make a town that is a religious entity. It's not a mixture or a total integrated uh, opportunity of people to live there. So this is a serious concern. I think we have to consider that as Orange County residents. Also, I think if you go ahead with this, I think Blooming Grove, Woodbury, Chester should also be considered, and you've got, you know, the um, infrastructure of people are concerned about Cornwall and the water. So there are many things here. I know KJ grows exponentially. Being a math teacher, I know what that means. Uh, so this is a problem. I don't know how we're going to handle it in Orange County. I. No United Monroe, and I understand their problem, but I don't think this is the solution yet. So I hope you will vote no. Thank you. And then Harley Doles regarding property. Good evening. Last time I spoke to you a little bit about an experience at one of my jobs, but tonight I'm here to speak to you as a lifelong student of history. This is a historic moment. Tonight, right? You understand that. We have an opportunity here. When I'm thinking about tonight, when I'm thinking about what our opportunity is, I'm reminded of the Treaty of Paris. Because it wasn't in 1776 when we declared our independence that we truly were able to move forward. It wasn't when Cornwallis surrendered at Yorktown. But it was when we came together and made an agreement in Paris that we could finally separate from the United Kingdom and be the United States of America. No one, but no one, understands the importance of independence better than Americans. It's our history. So, as I think about tonight, you have the opportunity to end the fighting, to bring peace, to let us move forward. The Treaty of Paris was not perfect. We had the War of 1812, but it also formed the closest friendship of nations that the world has ever known. Allies who have stuck together. 
it became a path to success, eventually. You work through the problems. You know that. You're legislatures. Please, take this historic moment and let us, on both sides, find peace and be independent. Thank you. Chairman Pressure, good evening, everyone. First, uh, let me just say I do not agree necessarily with my two friends, and they are my friends, on the issue of palm tree. But friends are allowed to disagree. Nearly four years ago, I pleaded with the county to allow the village of KJ to form its own town. Now the day has come. Tonight you were asked to vote on the merits of a petition to create the town of Palm Tree. There are many who object to the process, which gave negotiating rights to a political party and left the rest of us out. Their entire argument, KJ's influence in Monroe elections, is so great and violates the rights of all other Monroe residents that their block vote must be cut out and separated in the public's interests. Yes, they still retain the constitutional right to vote in every county, state, and federal elections, but just not in Monroe. This is a first in American history such reasoning has been applied. And where is the proof of all this influence? There isn't any. KT has the right under the law to form a town. That's what you are voting for tonight, nothing else. You said no to annexation, and the public hearing and the majority of the people that you, that you listen to are asking tonight for you to say yes. As far as KJ's influence in politics, the same argument applies in Rockland, in Aramapo, Brooklyn, and in Albany and Washington, D.C., where the ultra-Orthodox community has an ultra-high level of political engagement. Look at what KJ gets, is often said. However, Monroe didn't give them any of it. Who did? What's next? Telling the Satmars they can't vote in Brooklyn elections as well? No one argues the black vote matters. In Orange County, who will be the next county executive, assemblyman, or state senator will be decided not by Republicans or Democrats, but by the 11,000 swing votes. They decide who gets selected, they decide who gets elected. Did you know KJ pays over 25% of the townwide taxes? And according to our comptroller, Dr. Peter Martin, town tax, town tax wide taxes will rise by 52% when they leave. But that is our problem, not your problem. No one escapes this group's political wrath. We all know Langdon Chapman, he's a good man, a bright man, and an honest man. He was charged by the same political group of election fraud in KJ. They ordered Steve Newhouse, our county executive. Mr. Chapman would be fired, disbarred, and jailed. And for what? Any proof? No, just accusations. Did you know that the Town of Monroe Ethics Board, chaired by Mike Eakin, a member of United Monroe, has never been given a complaint against any town board member concerning KJ or anyone from KJ? Influence? Your own members cannot find anything which rises to the level of a complaint. Why should you then vote yes? I voted yes to the 164 acre, acre annexation. Your vote tonight affirms it was the right thing to do. It allowed for KJ's growth, ensured durable borders for years to come, and protected Monroe's ta tax base. For decades, KJ has been the bad guy. Thank you. That's it. Anna Allegra? Yeah, uh, hey, Wally's next. I'm sorry. Laura, uh, Laura made me shed a tear tonight with her speaking about her her daughter and uh, the man who spoke before me has had me openly weeping every night for the past four years. I want to, uh, I want to thank you all for your uh, careful consideration on the on the issue that you're going to uh, vote on tonight. Um, I also want to acknowledge that. Uh, all of your jobs have likely been particularly thankless uh, for the past few months, and uh, I want to I thank you for, for hearing us all. You've, you've all spent a lot of time with us, and I've, I've probably contributed greatly to driving your, your hourly wage down to below a dollar an hour. Um, I also want to say that all of you didn't just land here at the, uh, in county legislative seats. Um, you know, I took a look today at the, uh, the credentials and the pedigree of all of you and, and the amount of civic duty 
and, and public service jobs that you had are, are tremendous. It's a, it's a tremendous list of service and, and teaching and helping. Um, we, several of you served on town boards, village boards, you've been mayors, deputy mayors, uh, you've served on comprehensive plans, uh, planning boards, uh, you've served on zoning boards of appeals, uh, you've, uh, you've served as um, in volunteer organizations like the Boys and Girls Club, Kiwanis, uh, New York State Police, you've served as, um, Myrna was with the New York City Board of Education, uh, Jeff, I think you were a high school teacher, and uh, you know, when, when you think about all that you've done and all of the decisions and positions that you've been able to, to take and, and the reasons why people have either voted for you and or selected you for the, for the organizations that you've served, um, it, it all comes down to people's ability, your constituents' ability to say, I think this person has the right idea or the right ideas for my community. We don't have that in Monroe. We haven't had that for decades. We've had uh, a continuous war every election day, every year, uh, with the block vote. And it's, it's a war we can't win. And we have this tremendous opportunity tonight, if you will give it to us, or Monroe, to decide its own destiny on election day. And as Jeff said, yes, this is a historic, historic occasion. And I want to ask you very respectfully, and offer my opinion, that the right side of the issue is to vote yes. And give us our own right to self-determination on election day. Let us decide and let us vote. Thank you very much. Regarding palm tree, and then Veronica Connolly from Monroe regarding palm tree. Good evening, Chairman Brescia and legislators. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I'm Steve Welly, the mayor of the village of Paramount. Hopefully you've had the time to read the letter I sent you regarding the proposed formation of the town of Palm Tree, encourage you, encouraging you to vote yes tonight. You have the opportunity before you tonight of voting on a proposal which will change the course of the town of Monroe. Your yes vote will give the town of Monroe government back to the residents instead of a special interest block group. <coughs> there are some people who have been claiming that the establishment of this new town will create additional water and sewer demands and problems. These demands and problems which exist today and have existed for many years will continue to grow whether the new town is formed or not as the population of Curious Joel continues to grow dramatically. With the apparent cooperation of the village of Curious Joel has shown recently, now is the time to sit down with them and seek ways to come up with fair and equitable solution to the water and sewer issues for everyone. As I'm sure you were aware, the village of Harriman is split almost equally between the towns of Monroe and Woodbury. Although we haven't always been in agreement on all issues, the village of Harriman has always been able to work with the town and village of Woodbury. Unfortunately, it has been virtually impossible to work with the town of Monroe for several years. For those of you who have not witnessed the town of Monroe board meeting, for the last six years, it's been like a combination of the Three Stooges and Jerry Springer. <laughs> this is attributable to the increased chaos created by the current supervisor and KJ block vote elected councilman, in spite of the tremendous efforts of Councilman Cardone and McGinn. Your yes vote will allow the residents to elect their own town leaders and be able to better control their own destiny. If you vote no, the town board will be controlled by the KJ block vote, ensuring the demise of the Woodbury School District. Monroe Woodbury School District as we know it today. If you vote no, you're sentencing the town of Monroe and its non-KJ residents to continued lack of representation on the town board and diminishing quality of life. Do you want to be known as the legislator whose voice, whose vote was against open and fair government? It is my understanding that by law you are charged with voting on the completeness of the application to form the new town. 
If you are contemplating voting no, I request that you validate your reason for your no vote based on the law, not outside interference. You have a once in a lifetime opportunity to correct an appalling situation. Please allow the registered voters of the town of Monroe the right to have a functioning, responsive government. Please vote yes. Thank you. He's from Monroe as well. Good evening, legislators. My name is Veronica Connolly. I'm a village resident of Monroe. <coughs> I've been working tirelessly for the last five years with both Preserve Hudson Valley and United Monroe as a community volunteer activist. But many of you probably know that already. But what I want to say tonight is I want you to know me for more than my activism in my community. Uh, Mr. Turnbull, did you know that I'm the girls' basketball coach at Greenwood Lake Middle School? I know that you're a uh, certified referee. Um, Mrs. Sullivan, did you know that I'm an early intervention special education teacher and I service the children of Orange County in the EI program? I probably worked in all of your districts at one time or another. Um, Mr. Hines and Mr. DeSalvo, my husband was a 15-year volunteer fireman in our previous community in Long Island. So the reason I'm saying all these things is because I want you to know who I am as a person and not just as my activism with United Monroe and Preserve Hudson Valley. While I'm extremely uh, proud of the work that they've accomplished in these last years, I'm more than that. But what I really am is I'm afraid. I'm a mom. I'm, I'm a teacher. I'm afraid for my community. I'm afraid that I'm going to have to leave my home because the way that I choose to live is not going to be anymore in the town of Monroe. I want to continue to stay in the town I love and have my daughter graduate Monroe Woodbury High School. Excuse me, sir. I'm going to be able to have a chance to choose my destiny and not have people like Harley Doles control it for me. He's been very mean, rude, disrespectful to many of us in Monroe, and we don't want the likes of him anymore. There's an emergency in Monroe right now, gentlemen and ladies, and we're screaming for help. Please throw us a lifeline and let us choose our destiny. Please vote yes tonight, because a no vote ensures that the game will be over for us. The ball is in your court. When you vote yes, you vote to save our town, and you give us the opportunity to move forward and maybe mend fences with the village of Carries Joel or hopefully Palm Tree. Because sometimes separation is better. It's like a relationship. You know, if parents are constantly arguing, what does that do for anybody? Well, sometimes when you have a separation, it makes it better, and the family can come together and maybe work together. I don't know, but we have to try something different. Your yes vote is what we need tonight. Thank you. And the people on deck, you're welcome to come sit in the front row to wait to speak if you want. Chairman Brescia, the legislature, good evening. My name is Russ Kassoff. I am a 21-year resident of the unincorporated town of Monroe. I have always felt that my vote for the best candidate in our local government to serve all the people of the community was canceled out by the KJ Block vote. The mandated vote by the obedient and insular citizens of KJ created the situation we are in today. Voter apathy prevailed for decades and thus voter turnout was low until United Monroe came into being in 2013, waking up the electorate for the betterment of the overall community and the preservation of the rural residential lifestyle that we are all here to enjoy. Most of you have no idea what it's like to live in the town of Monroe. Sharing our story to folks in other places is met with disbelief. When instructed to vote for a candidate, they know not for whom they vote and how that candidate may do harm to us, only represent their leaders and their financial interests and how this impacts our neighboring community. Those of us who attend town board meetings are deprived of our precious time by the rantings and filibustering of our illegally elected supervisor, Harley Doles, his disrespect to anyone who might be in support of United Monroe, and his misogyny and blatant bullying of Mrs. Cohn there. If not legally criminal, it is morally criminal. Dole's so-called friends, several town employees who never identify themselves as such when they publicly speak, and ex-employees who have been fired, 
have joined in the hate with lies, vitriol, disrespect, and bullying, and harassment of Mrs. Convert and the activists working on behalf of the entire community in ways that you cannot imagine. These are the direct consequences of the block vote. In 2013, his cronies were screaming at election observers inside the village of KJ, who were just checking signatures of the voters, accusing them of being anti-Semites. As a proud American Jew, whose father, grandfather, and their entire generation served in the military during World Wars I and II, I will never forgive this man for the horrific behavior towards the townspeople that he has displayed time and again, desecrating the service of my family and all servicemen and women who have preserved and defended our freedoms. Only the voters residing in Monroe have standing on this issue, and only you have the power to grant us the right to vote on whether or not to allow KJ to secede from us. There is overwhelming support from our local elected officials, the two school boards, and the overall community, including written and oral comments, asking you to vote yes. In closing, I urge you to vote yes and allow us to vote on separation so that the citizens of Monroe Town and its two remaining villages can control our own government, environment, and not be beholden to the needs and wants of one village and their very different aspirations. Legal issues that are not under your jurisdiction will be dealt with in the proper forums in the fullness of time. Thank you very much. Sawitsky, Sawitsky, I believe. Monroe, Palm Tree, also. Chairman Brescia, legislators, thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Debbie Barringer. I'm a lifelong resident of Monroe, and I live in the village of Monroe with my husband and four children, ranging from the ages of six to 15. My children attend the amazing Monroe Woodbury School District. I'm a trustee in the village of Monroe, and as you know, the mayor sent a letter with all the trustees support that we're in favor of separation. I'm fortunate to work as a reading specialist in the Pine Bush School District. I've just started my 11th year in this wonderful district. I have about a 40 minute commute, and when I drive on Route 302, I have spectacular views of mountains, farms, horses, and open space. I'm sure the legislator is aware of the potential problems the Pine Bush School District may face with the recent and illegal takeover of the village of Bloomingburg. Bloomingburg is part of the Pine Bush School District. Many residents and teachers in Pine Bush are worried that the new voters in Bloomingburg will eventually take over the school district. Some are lobbying for legislation to allow school districts to have ward systems to prevent a total takeover of the Pine Bush School District School Board. Wards are districts not unlike municipal boundaries. All the people of Monroe are asking for is a redrawing of boundaries, not unlike a ward system. We know that Blooming Grove now has a ward system. We also know what has happened in the East Ramapo School District. Curious Joel will become palm tree, taking only 56 more acres. And like Ms. Colmbear said, a lot of people don't realize that KJ already has the 164 acres. Monroe will remain Monroe, and the people in our community will have representation, which we haven't had in a really long time. Just like the parents and taxpayers in Pine Bush would have representation on their school board if a ward system is passed. No one said that the petition KJ filed is flawed in any way, and it's my understanding that New York State law requires you vote yes unless the petition is flawed. As I see it, you have but one choice. Let us vote. You can change our history. You can help us decide our future. My family is depending on you. And I have to say, like so many other people, for five years, we have been spending hours and hours away from our family, my children, their sporting events, because we've just been trying to do what's best for our town. And when people come up and they shed tears, it's because it's become our life. And we want our lives back. We want our town back. Thank you. Okay, Jason, you're up next, and followed by Tom Ammons regarding the palm tree. He's also from Monroe. Uh, good evening, is honorable members of the Orange County Legislature. My name is Jason Trewinski. I'm from the village of Monroe, and I'm here to voice support for a new town. But there's a few stipulations that I think you guys need to consider before you even vote yes. 
Number one should be an updated comprehensive plan from the village of Kiryush Joel. Their last update was from December of 1999. And the reason I say that is because a comprehensive plan provides a legal document for the future and future goals of a town or village. Um, some might say I'm putting the cart before the horse on this one, but if you think about it, any business or any sort of venture would not go ahead without some sort of set of goals or objectives that they're trying to accomplish beforehand. Um, secondly, I'd like the village to provide a more updated zoning map. Their last one was that I could find was from 1977, which was the founding of their town. Now, the Orange County Planning website has one on file, but it's an unofficial draft. And from my analyzation of it, it looks like it's primarily based on the 1977 official. So we're using data that's more than twice my age. Uh, and that's a little ridiculous, I think, especially in the age where information is so readily accessible and easy to make. Um, lastly, I'd like to reiterate, this is not a now decision. You can easily call a special election in June before, poli before politics even get involved in this stuff. I saw a bunch of you guys shaking your heads. Yes, you can. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, my name is followed by Peter Martin from Monroe with regard to palm tree. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Tom Ammons, long-time uh, resident of Monroe. Thank you for giving me one more opportunity to share my perspective. I really appreciate it. Uh, I believe you can all comfortably vote yes tonight by listening to a local vignette I'd like to share. A Hasidic man, Mr. KJ, and Monroe resident, Mr. Monroe, walk into the captain's table. As they nestled up to the bar, each decided to order their favorite drink. A glass of Manischewitz from Mr. KJ, bottled in Brooklyn, and a glass of Jack Daniels, bottled in Tennessee, from Mr. Monroe. As they began to drink, Mr. Monroe openly posed a few questions. What can we do to allow each other to enjoy our drinks from different worlds, yet pursue our own destinies? How can we reconcile our mutually exclusive lifestyle goals? Mr. KJ said there is good news. We will be reaching that objective very soon. The upcoming referendum vote will give us that ability. Mr. Monroe replied, I've read about the vote, but how so? Mr. KJ said, the yes vote will allow us to form our own town and take full responsibility for the management of our explosive growth. By having our own town, our block vote will no longer be able to dictate the future of the town of Monroe. Mr. Monroe felt relieved. He realized that he could continue his suburban lifestyle, send his children to the best school district in New York State, and financially realize some equity in the future value of his home. Hearing the good news, Mr. Monroe said he was feeling very lucky and was going to play blackjack. Mr. KJ said, what's that? It's a card game, and when you add, when the cards add up to 21, you win. I think all 21 legislators will vote yes tonight. <laughs> Mr. KJ said, that would be great. Let's toast to the vote. And as they raised their glasses, Mr. KJ exclaimed, Mazel Tov. And Mr. Monroe said, God bless and Happy New Year. And they lived happily ever after in the county of Orange. <laughs> Good evening. That's uh, it's a really tough act to follow, I must say. Um, I'm Peter Martin. Uh, from 1990 through 2009, I served uh, on, the, on the Monroe Town Board as councilman. Currently, I'm the comptroller for the town of Monroe. I'd like to uh, make it very clear that for the 20 years I served as councilman in Monroe, we had a very good working relationship with the village of Kirstow. For whatever reason today, this is not the case. I would like to move focus of tonight, I'd like to move from the focus of 56 acres in politics to financial considerations. 
Looking at your agenda tonight, I believe there are at least two reports that are missing. The financial effect on the town of Monroe due to the formation of the town of Palm Tree and the financial effect on the new town, Palm Tree. I can tell you that based on the 2017 Town of Monroe budget, the formation of this new town would lead to a reduction of $1,045,704 in town-wide revenues, tax revenues, because the residents of the village of Kirastuel pay 25% of the town-wide tax. In addition to tax revenues, there will be a loss of other revenues, including revenue sharing, that's per capita, for 50%, we lose 50%. Interest in penalties, that's on tax bills. Dial a bus fare box and state and federal programs reimbursed, that reimburse the, the dial bus program, and mortgage tax. The loss of other re revenues will amount to $485,500, bringing the total lost revenue for the town-wide fund to $1,531,000 and uh, 204, $1,531,204. That's on a budget appropriation of $6.5 million. Pretty hard to cut 1.5 out of 6.5. The loss in revenue would increase the town-wide tax rate per thousand of taxable assessed value from $7.47 to $11.39. That's an increase of 52%. In addition to lost revenues, there will be a long-term effect of reduced growth in the taxable assessed value. In the last 10 years, the town-wide taxable value has increased by 50%. However, when the taxable assessed value of the village of Kirastuel is removed, increase, if you care to guess, in taxable assessed value in the unincorporated town, Village of Monroe and Village of Harriman has increased over the last 10 years at a mere 4.6%. This loss of growth in taxable assessed value will compromise the ability of future town boards to craft reasonable budgets. If the village of, of Curious Terrell remains within the town of Monroe, there would be a phenomenal growth. I have to cut you off. Thank you. Okay, Diane Egan, town of Monroe. Regarding Palm Tree. Followed by Christina Kiesel. Or Kissel, Monroe, Palm Tree. Good evening, uh, Chairman Brescia and members of the legislature. I'll be brief because I have spoken before. I'm heart sick that the outcome of the vote tonight is even still in question. To me, a citizen and taxpayer of the town of Monroe and the Monroe Woodbury School District, the issue is crystal clear. It's the very survival of my hometown and the survival of that school district from which my three children graduated and is currently attended by 6,890 pupils. Those are real people whose real lives will be impacted by what your decision is tonight. To the undecided legislators, please consider very carefully the vote you're about to cast and the real lives that you will be affecting. I ask you to put aside politics and parochial concerns. If you vote no, you're gonna be voting to one, deny the people of Monroe the right to democratically choose their own fate. Why? You'll be voting to ignore the endorsement of the Village of Monroe Board of Trustees, the Mayor of the Village of Monroe, the Mayor of the, of the Village of Harriman, the Board of Trustees of the Village of Harriman, the School Boards of Monroe Woodbury and KJ. Why would you do this? I don't get it. Why would you undemocratically make the votes of eight people in this legislature worth more than the votes of the people of the town of Monroe? Why would you do that? You, you would be casting votes that affect my town, my school district, when you're not residents of Monroe, nor do you send your children to Monroe Woodbury. Why would you do this? Some of you see this and they sell it to your constituents as an anti-KJ vote. It's not. It's an anti-Monroe vote. The separation is not a panacea to all the ills. We know that. Many issues exist now and will remain 
to be solved by the county, the surrounding towns, and the newly reformed town of Monroe. By arguing that this doesn't solve this problem or that problem, that still doesn't add up to a no vote. Instead, this should be a clarion call for all of us to get to work on those issues together. A no vote is a slap in the face to the people of Monroe, who are your neighbors. And I beseech those undecided people, do the right thing tonight, vote yes. by Grace Sass regarding Palm Tree. She's also from Monroe. Good evening, members of the Orange County Legislature. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak this evening. My name is Christina Kiesel, and I've been an Orange County resident since 1994. Like many other residents, I was attracted to this area because of the abundance of lakes, streams, woods, and mountains, as well as the reasonable commuting distance to New Jersey and Manhattan. But I also knew that someday I would like to raise children here. So I carefully chose the Monroe Woodbury School District when deciding where to buy a house. I now have two children attending the middle school and the high school. And I can't say enough about the staff, curriculum, music and arts programs that are enriching their lives every day. Students from the towns of Monroe, Harriman, Central Valley, Highland Mills, and parts of Tuxedo, Chester, and Blooming Grove are also benefiting from fine educational programs. Monroe Woodbury is the gateway to Orange County and is and should continue to be a crown jewel of this area, attracting young families and professionals who want to live and raise their families here. The first thing that most people research when looking for a home is the quality of the school district. That's true whether or not they plan to have children. A quality school district it directly impacts everyone's home value. With the enormity of this school district, it should not be the weakest link in Orange County. We've all seen what has become of East Ramapo. It has forever tarnished the reputation of Rockland County. We cannot allow that to happen here. The creation of Palm Tree and the redistricting of the Monroe Woodbury District is the answer. The separation may not resolve every problem. My eyes are wide open and I realize there will be environmental issues and we will still need to contend with them. However, here's what separation will do. It will allow residents of Monroe to fairly elect responsible and morally upstanding representatives to their town council. It will empower the citizens of Monroe and all its surrounding Orange County neighbors to strengthen their zoning, maintain forever green buffers, and enforce sustainable and reasonable development. It will allow the parents of Monroe Woodbury students to rest assured their children are receiving an excellent education and that their school district will not be stripped of vital programs. And lastly and most importantly, it preserves the image and reputation of Orange County as a whole allowing the citizens of Monroe the right to vote on separation in November is the right thing to do. We have a once in a lifetime opportunity for compromise. Please do the right thing and vote yes this evening. Thank you. Followed by Monica Howe, excuse me, Monroe, Montreal also. Good evening, my name is Gay Gray Sass and I am a 14 year resident of Monroe. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. There are many complex issues regarding the village of Curious Joel, but what you are voting on tonight is not complex at all. It's simple. You are voting on whether or not to place a referendum on the ballot, which would allow Monroe and KJ to vote on their own separation. That's all. If you vote yes, you empower Monroe. If you vote no, you empower KJ. Monroe has been fighting for control of our town with one hand tied behind our backs. Tonight, you can untie that other hand and put us on a level playing field with all of our neighboring towns. KJ sees that they must negotiate, and we now have leverage. This is our chance. Monroe voters will be outnumbered by KJ voters in the very near future. It's a mathematical fact. We will then lose the school and town boards. Imagine an even bolder KJ with control over Monroe's town and school boards, including our 13,000 acres and our sizable budgets a $13 million town budget, and a $171 million school budget. That's quite a war chest for Curious Joel. As a legislator, are you comfortable reporting back to your constituents that you have put $184 million in the hands of the KJ leadership to spend as they see fit? And that's each and every year. How will you defend yourselves against such vast resources? Some legislators here tonight may, might feel that they were elected with the line, not one inch. If you vote no tonight, 
Imagine challengers to your office in the next election, attributing some new slogans to you. He wouldn't give, give an inch, but he gave 13,000 acres. Or he wouldn't give in to KJ, he gave it all to KJ. Please don't let that be the case. Preserve Hudson Valley and United Monroe have sent up the flares so that other communities can act and avoid becoming the next East Ramapo, Bloomingburg, or Lakewood, New Jersey. Your constituents overwhelmingly support United Monroe's efforts and we thank them for it. Now you can stand up for Monroe. United we stand, divided we fall. Empower Monroe and vote yes. There still will exist the same very important issues of water, sewer, traffic, zoning, and the like. These issues are not going away, but these issues are better tackled by having a strong and independent Monroe in the county. A weaker Monroe will only make your towns weaker. A stronger, independent Monroe makes for a stronger ally. We're all in this together. I implore you to support your good and faithful neighbors of Monroe and untie that other hand. I will leave you to consider this quote by Benjamin Franklin. We must indeed all hang together, or most assuredly, we shall all hang separately. Empower Monroe and vote yes. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman Fresha and members of the Orange County Legislature. I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to speak to you tonight. My name is Monica Hawk, and my family and I have lived in the village of Monroe for 23 years. It's very easy to see why residents of Monroe would want to separate from the village of Curious Joel. Curious Joel's insular society and quest for multifamily housing is and always will be opposed to the rural, residential, and suburban landscape that so many residents have moved here to enjoy. With separation, we in the town of Monroe will now have an opportunity to put ourselves on a level playing field with the other towns and municipalities here in Orange County. But what about the rest of the county? What's in it for them? The Orange County legislatures who, legislators who represent the towns and municipalities outside of the town of Monroe may think it would be politically expedient to vote no on the separation referendum and just shrug this off as a Monroe problem. To those legislatures that may want to vote down the separation referendum, I ask you, what will you say to your constituents after the next election, and it will be the next election, when the citizens that you represent share their borders and their political representation with a 13,000 acre behemoth of a town that will forever be beholden to the block vote? That will be the reality when the land acreage within the town of Monroe is inevitably controlled by the voters of Curious Joel. We've all done the math. We know that this will be the reality. The village of Curious Joel will control the Monroe Town Board, and as such, they will control our zoning and planning boards. We know that the village of Curious Joel has had a ter terrible track record when it comes to environmental stewardship. What will you say when your constituents ask you what you did to prevent the tax base of the block vote from increasing exponentially, giving them free reign to fund high-density building projects and land annexations that affect the entire county with a newly acquired tax revenue of a town consisting of 50,000-plus residents? Today, the county legislator legislature has the opportunity to do what's right for all of Orange County. Please don't let it slip away. Vote in favor of a separation referendum. Thank you. Thank you. Followed by Patricia McHugh from Harriman regarding... Good evening. My name is Eileen Ruddy and I'm a resident of the town of Monroe. Many have said that the separation of the town of Monroe from the village of Curious Joel will have far-reaching effects on the rest of Orange County. What will the effects be if we don't separate? The population of KJ is growing and is going to continue to grow either way. Their impact on Orange County and the region will continue to grow. What is the result of not separating? KJ continues to grow, only now they have an entire town of 13,000 acres to rezone to high density housing. What's next without separation? The school district will fall, 
just like the East Ramco School District has, has failed. A public school district where buildings are not properly maintained, where children are left without opportunities for AP classes, after school activities, athletics, and the arts. This is what happens without separation. A no vote tonight means turning our backs on the thousands of children of the Monroe Woodbury School District. Is that what we want our legacy to be? For 40 years, we've kicked the can down the road on this issue. Now is the time to act responsibly to save our schools and our home values. Tonight, I ask that you vote yes to allowing a referendum on separation on the ballot in November. Let us let Monroe determine our own de destiny and let Monroe vote. Thank you very much. Followed by Mike Egan, Monroe, United Monroe regarding Palm Tree. Good evening. My name is Patricia McHugh, and I have lived in the town of Monroe for 24 years. There are many critical issues involved with this separation. I am here tonight to speak about the one nearest and dearest to my heart, and that is the education of our future generations. I have been a public school teacher for 34 years, and I have dedicated my life to teaching. I am greatly concerned about the education of future generations of students who will be attending the Monroe Woodbury schools because if the Monroe Woodbury Board of Education is ever totally controlled by Hasidic men, many of whom are poorly educated themselves, you can expect our wonderful school system to become completely destroyed. What does that mean? That means generations of students will be denied the right to a decent education the ability to secure entrance to colleges and other schools of higher education, and the ability to obtain good, well-paying jobs so they can support themselves and their families as responsible citizens are expected to do. How do I know this? I would like to read to you from a recent article published by Rabbi Yosef Newfield, who works for an immigration law firm in New York City. The title of the article is, Why is Mayor de Blasio turning a blind eye to the Hasidic education crisis in our city? In this article, Rabbi Newfield speaks of growing up illiterate and uneducated, even though he attended a premier Hasidic Jewish day school in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. He goes on to say, I learned nothing relevant to the 21st century modern workforce at school. At age 26, I was almost fired from my job for writing a billion on a document instead of a million. I did not know how many zeros the number a million had. My lack of such practical knowledge was not a failure of the educational system, it was the system. He continues, as a school child, I was taught only Torah and Talmud for 12 years. I could tell you how many Zuzim, ancient Babylonian coinage, you owed your neighbor if your ox bored him, but I could not do simple math equations. Why did the state not protect my educational rights as a child, he asks. If the Hasidim obviously do not value secular education for their own children, how can you expect them to value secular education for the students of the Monroe Woodbury school system when they completely take it over as you know they will? The strength of our nation depends on an educated workforce. Almost 7,000 students have eagerly started school in Monroe just this week. What about those innocent kindergarten students beginning their educational careers in Monroe Woodbury? Will they be able to graduate high school in 13 years? Will they have enough credits? Will they become contributing members of our society? Will one of them be able to find a cure for cancer? All children deserve the right to the finest education we can provide for them. I am imploring you to vote yes tonight, and please give the people of Monroe a chance to vote to save our schools for generations to come. Thank you for your time. Uh, good evening, Michael Egan, a uh, 35-year resident of the town of Monroe, uh, co-founder of United Monroe and Preserve Hudson Valley. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you one more time. Um, creation of the ta new town of Palm Tree required four votes. It, re it recently received uh, the first two approvals when the boards of education of Monroe Woodbury and Curious Joel School Districts each voted unanimously to change their boundaries. If 14 of you vote yes tonight, then Monroe will have two full months to 
determine and discuss the actual financial impacts, and then make a decision in a townwide referendum, 22,000 voters. Palm Tree and the United Monroe KJ Peace Treaty offer hope of a new and a better way forward for all of Southern Orange County. They end litigations and their legal fees. They prevent annexations of land from the town of Monroe and Blooming Grove for at least 10 years. They've started conversations between KJ and Woodbury to settle lawsuits, and an agreement on one of them has already been reached. A yes vote from you has been endorsed by both county executives, Monroe's Democratic Committee, the villages of Harriman and Monroe, the grassroots organization Preserve Blooming Grove, and New York's State Assemblyman James Cooper, among others. It's highly unlikely a separation opportunity will come again. More probably, KJ would conclude it has no choice but to return to the old bitter way of fighting, take control of Monroe's town board for all time, and then give itself the authority to rezone and populate the town's 13,000 acres instead of just the 56 given to it in the palm tree. Think for a moment about the major issues that would present to Monroe's neighboring towns in all of Orange County. Let this not be a political or divisive issue. Tonight's vote is a simple up or down on one issue only. Should the residents of Monroe and Curious Joel have the opportunity to decide on palm tree for themselves? There is no middle ground. In the spirit of cooperation, we ask each of you to help Monroe and thereby help all of Orange County. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, legislators, for the opportunity to speak. Um, first, contrary to what uh, some folks have said, particularly at the public hearing I attended in Central Valley, um, I don't believe this has been rushed. That's been one of the points of opposition that some people have put forward, is why the rush? This proposal's been at your desk for over a year. Uh, the concept's been at your desk for over a year. And to your credit, I applaud you for taking the time to look at this, study this closely, and carefully consider it, because this is that important. It should have been looked at very closely and studied as it was. So I applaud you for that point. Now, this is not a perfect proposal. In fact, uh, there is still an element or two that I remain uncomfortable with. However, on the whole, the prudent vote to take tonight, the prudent action is to vote yes and move this forward. I take a slightly different view than what some others who support a yes vote take, in that I don't view this as simply a vote to advance the palm tree proposal. And I take that view because there are so many other items that are contingent on the creation of the town of palm tree and your yes vote and moving this proposal forward. As has been emphasized by a number of speakers, um, the resolution that the Monroe Woodbury School Board passed to shift boundaries is contingent on your yes vote and the creation on the town of Palm Tree. That's the school district that I attended. I'm an alma mater of Monroe Woodbury and the school district that I want to protect. The integrity is at stake in this vote. There's a 10-year moratorium on annexations from Blooming Grove and Monroe into KJ Palm Tree that is contingent on this vote and the creation on the town of Palm Tree. The dropping of a lawsuit against the village of Woodbury, challenging a six-year lawsuit, challenging the village of Woodbury's comprehensive plan and zoning, a lawsuit that would potentially devastate Woodbury if K KJ was successful in is contingent on this vote and the creation of the town of Palm Tree. 507 acres is still on the table if you vote no. And with 507 acres, more than double, almost triple what you're considering, there are so many other ramifications, including a shared boundary with Blooming Grove, the solution of which is contingent on a yes vote here before you tonight. So for all these reasons, and I know there will be a couple of other items that Legislator Berkman is going to raise later. For all of these reasons, I implore you to vote yes, in particular to protect the integrity of the school district I attended and love 
please vote yes. Thank you. Next speaker after award is Ari Felberman, Government Relations Coordinator of uh, CARES 12, and also regarding contract. Uh, thank you, Ward Brower, private citizen. Um, <clears throat> I've been called old and irrelevant by the chairwoman of United Monroe, and I don't mind that. You are not old, and you're not, not turning out irrelevant, because you have the destiny, destiny of the entire county, as well as the town of Monroe. If you wish to further the expansive growth and unregulated growth of the village of KJ, then vote yes. If you wish to expand the uncontrolled growth within the unincorporated part of the town of Monroe, with the Democratic Alliance owning most of that property, then vote yes. If you wish to help the leaders of United Monroe with their indemnification clause, then vote yes. They're the only three groups that benefit. Three flawed points. I heard a lot of fictitious facts, which are just redundant, I'm sure, uh, and a lot of fairy tales. But three flawed points that I wish they were true. And there will be no annexation for 10 years, our problem is solved. Annexation is not our problem. It's colonization through local legislation. What do I mean by that? When you have a board, which we had from 2015, United Monroe 1, with the help of 2,500 votes on the Democratic Alliance, and they have put on the books laws and they're proposing book legislation that will take one acre, which normally would yield four and a half people, turn it to SR10 with a supersized family, that means 40 people on that same acre. And after 10 years, the accessory apartment law kicks in, that's 80 plus people on an acre. That's within, that's in the town of Monroe. That is uncontrolled growth, whether we have a new town of palm tree or not, that's within us. Annexation is a minor consideration. There will be no block vote if we pass this agreement. We we'll have the block vote influencing our, ele our elections. Unfortunately, the block vote will participate in this year's election. They will elect three, count or three town board positions, virtually controlling the town board for the next four years. So if they become a separate town in two years, they still control our town with more favored colonization. And the other one, let the voters decide. And a democracy, that's always proven, but it has a caveat. The voters have to be informed. An uninformed voter is a dangerous voter. And every time this topic came up on the town agenda for the last almost year and a half, this board, controlled by the Democratic Alliance has taken this topic of a new town off the agenda. They want to keep the people in the dark, and as us farmers say, feed them fertilizer. This is a bad deal. Thank you. Next, Ari, followed by Councilman Mike McGinn from the Town of Monroe regarding Council. Final speaker. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of this legislative body. On behalf of the elected leadership of Curious Joel, I'm here to say thank you. Thank you to this legislature and to the local elected officials and the groups who've encouraged us to engage our counterparts in the give and take, which created the blueprint for the proposed town of Palm Tree. Thank you to the various groups who negotiated in good faith on behalf of their constituents while driving a hard bargain. Some of the negotiations already produced tangible results, as mentioned earlier, while others are still in the works. All these efforts brought us to where we are tonight. As such, win, lose, or draw, you deserve our gratitude for having made this historic moment possible. I therefore ask you to please let history record this date, September 7, 2017, as the date Orange County shifted away from litigation to engagement and dialogue. An affirmative vote this evening on the referendum would encourage negotiations to resolve other outstanding issues. So thank you for getting this ball rolling, and I ask you that you allow it to gain momentum by allowing Monroe residents a say in their own destiny. Please let me know. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Mike McGinn, Councilman Town Monroe. Um, 
in my conversation with a lot of you after the last two public hearings, one of the uh, one of the one of your concerns was that the electorate, the, the citizens of Monroe, would not have information should you pass a referendum. Which, of course, we hope you or not the referendum, but you send that referendum down to, to, to be voted on. Um, the the uh, as we've stated that publicly in the media, uh, also at our town board meetings. Should you pass that tonight, which we, of course we hope you do, um, we are going to hold several public information sessions. Uh, at those sessions, the stakeholders for, from the community, the school board, the mayors from the villages, will all be invited to be there to answer questions. Uh, we have already gone through the process of obtaining a uh, leading municipal accounting firm that will give us the true numbers, not the numbers you heard that were unauthorized from the controller tonight, but the true numbers that will be given to the town voters so they'll be well informed and they'll know what they're voting on when they vote on November 7th. On top of that, those public information sessions will be televised on our, on our uh, cable channel and like all our town board meetings, they'll be on YouTube and we'll get thousands of, thousands of hits from people that can't believe what they're seeing. So, um, so you've heard some misinformation here tonight. There'll be plenty of information put out there. I can assure you that the, the voters of Monroe will be well informed when it comes that time, right? Secondly, this is a, a matter of technical law, and it's whether the, the petition that was filed meets the technical aspects of New York State law, and whether you agree with that. And, and I believe uh, at, the, at the last uh, public hearing that was held in Kyrus Joel, you had two opposing attorneys, one for Kyrus Joel and one for Preserve Hudson Valley. Uh, both agree on the fact that, yes, those petitions and, and do, in fact, meet and exceed what is required by New York State law to, to approve the referendum to be sent down to the voters. Uh, and I believe your own counsel has agreed with that. If you can find three attorneys that can agree on, on, uh, on a matter as complex as this, you know, I would take it and run with it because there's not too many times that's going to happen. And one of those attorneys is actually suing the town right now, and I still agree with them. So, uh, you know, and lastly, I know a lot of you may not have been happy with the way uh, that this was conducted, that they felt excluded. And, and you know, I understand uh, your feelings about that. But for us, this isn't about politics. This is about survival. You know, you have two Republicans pulling for two Democrats to come on that board because we know that they have the interests of, of uh, the people of Monroe and, and, and their hearts. They know, I mean, we know that they're people of integrity. We're done with unscrupulous, inept politicians that have had that board. So please, I thank you for your consideration and please vote yes for this time. You can come back as a special guest anytime.